Hi everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. It's an absolutely washout day outside, so I'm indoors trying to get a few uh, house planting jobs done, uh, which includes a bit of potting up of that, that, that dragon fruit. Um, so let's have a little look and uh, see how I'm going to do it. Right, let's start at the beginning. So um, possibly a few of you have seen the original uh, propagation video on propagating a dragon fruit and that is the mother plant from which it was taken. Uh, video I think was probably two years ago and at the time the plant in question was a lot lot smaller. Now that kind of sprawls all over the place and uh, indeed wants tidying up. Um, I have done that as a little cutting last year as well as this one. So this was actually done in the February of 2022 and you can see the section, the original section there and then it's produced all of this top growth last year and at the moment the plant is growing just in this 10 and a half centimetre pot and it takes a long time for the actual uh, cutting to venture out really into much of the compost and so it's only only now that um, you've got a little bit of uh, fibrous root to the base of it and say so now we're into January is the time where actually a lot of these more tropical plants are starting to make their transition and wanting to to grow and you can see that that is the case there as we got a little bit more top growth to it and because that is now getting well, very top heavy, it's time to pot it up. So I'm going to go from a 10.5 centimetre pot into what is classed as a 13 centimetre pot and using bamboo cane as support rather than that small split cane. Um, process or my mixture, I should say, I'm going to be using roughly about 10% worth of perlite in with a uh, multi-purpose John in his um, compost mixture so that means that that is essentially a compost mixed with about well in this case it's about five percent of loam so that gives it a nice bit of weight to it which aids with the moisture retention and um, yeah certainly that mixed with the perlite will work really well. Uh, I suppose the old uh, joke adage how do you pot a cactus carefully? That definitely comes into question. So, uh, armed with my trusty bit of Domino's paper that I folded up, um, that's what I'm going to be using to hold the uh, dragon fruit in place whilst I um, pot it. Right, okay, so as I say, the idea is to go from this small pot into this larger one. Uh, before we think about taking this out and messing around with it, it's probably easier to be a bit more prepared. And let's get the soil mixed together. So we want to mix the perlite with the compost to give us our potting medium. Don't, um, don't feel the need to fill the whole pot's worth because you've already got quite a bit of compost already in there. So what you actually need to pot is going to be different and won't need the same amount of volume. <clears throat> so we'll just add a little bit more, just be on the safe side. And so you can see there, that's a nice free draining mix. And that white stuff, the perlite, um, I have mentioned it multiple times in other videos. Uh, I use it because it's a high draining material. It is a volcanic or essentially a volcanic type um, matter. So it is lightweight, aids with drainage, let's get a few bits, aids with drainage, but it also absorbs moisture. So it will retain the moisture into it. And then as the surrounding compost dries out, it will allow the compost to um, draw out the moisture that is contained within the perlite. But um, it is a very good drainage material. So that's what makes it good. So we we'll start with the pot. You're going to fill it so it's um, going to accommodate this 10 centimetre pot 
directly into the top of it. So you don't want to be burying the plant any, any deeper. So put it into the base, lightly firm it down. Don't want to go too much. Uh, don't want to firm it too much so it becomes impenetrable for excess moisture. So we've done that. <clears throat> now comes the harder bit. Yes, you could wear gloves. Um, personally, I don't really like wearing gloves as you sort of lose the uh, uh, dexterity that your fingers provide. So <clears throat> I'll try and do it left-handed so that you can see on the camera still. Just wrap it around the entirety of the plant and get it in tight, but without crushing the plant. Then with your other hand, you will just want to try and loosen off the compost so we can get the root ball out. If you feel that it's slipping, reposition and do it again. Right, now I'm just going to lay it down so I don't damage it or break it and gently pull the pot off so that is done. Now these are quite handy because they produce these nice little tendrils and you can see there that you've got a nice root zone intact. We just offer it up and you can see there that, well, let me tilt it. There is a little bit down in the pot, but that is good. That's where we want it. So we want it roughly with that rim and that will allow for our watering or feeding reservoir. Um, I will add a little bit more compost, not a lot, just to one side because it was sloping a little bit. So again, use your tendril, pop it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition in the pot so that it is back to the center of this new pot. So two reasons. One, it means, yeah, I don't need that. This, um, this root ball is going to be tight up against there. And that will allow me to then get this bamboo cane into the side without damaging any of the existing root zone. And that's really important. So now just literally holding that, you can get your compost in, try and compact it as you go, because that is what's going to hold your cane in place. And again, it's going to stop every, uh, stop all these um, air pockets forming, which in turn will mean that you'll get erratic watering and feeding. And also, it will also cause a compost slump, which we don't want. So just try and work it around as much as possible. And the good thing with dragon fruit actually is that it doesn't matter if you add a bit extra compost to the top because they will root into that. So just give it a light tap. Just want a little bit more, not a lot. Final firm, so do your firm around the edge, all the way around. And that is nicely in there. So for the time being, I'm just gonna rest it. And then we've got the bamboo cane. Determine whether you need the full height of the cane or whether a smaller one will do. I am gonna go with full height. So with this, position it so that it's against the root ball and you want it on the, on the side that actually the plant is leaning away from. So then that way, when you put it in, you'll be pulling the plant back into this uh, structure rather than enhancing the, the lean. So cane in, firm around. If you need, add a little bit more, give it a nice firm. So that's going to provide all that. And I'm not going to take this split cane out yet because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and get 
some loose ties around it. Now, the key with the dragon fruit, don't tie around this joint because that will cause it to break. So at this point, I'm going to tie around the original base and just get that done. So you want it tight enough that you're pulling in the actual dragon fruit plant, but not so tight that it's going to bite into the side. So just check. Yeah, that's fine. You can loosen off before we do the double knot. And for this, I'm just using some jute twine. Um, I prefer this than the string. One, it breaks down after a while, but actually, because it's nice, um, natural fibres, it doesn't uh, cause the same issues as um, normal string. So because there's a lot of growth on the top here and it's going to be a right pain to get it in tidily, I am just going to do a nice loose tie to the top. Let me just show you. So very loose on the top there and that will just give it a little bit of support whilst I uh, work my way up the actual stem. So it doesn't, yeah, it's not going to stay like that. So now we've got top section done, bottom section done. There we are, let me just show you. I'm going to take this split cane out because as you can see now, with the split cane in, it's causing the, uh, the fresh growth to go into an angle, which I don't want. So Cut that off, carefully pull out your split cane or whatever cane you happen to have. Now we've got that nice free structure, you can see what we're left with. If you need to use your bit of uh, paper or card again to allow you to pull it, then that's fine or we'll get a second person to help you. Or like I tend to do, use the tendrils. The tendrils are fine to hold, so long as you're a little bit careful with them um, and don't pull them so much that you end up tearing the main thing. So pull it like so. And then what you can do is if you've got some of your card left or your paper left, wrap it around the cane. And that allows you to hold it tight against the cane, while you then use your other hand to do the tying. So you can hold it with your little fingers or whatever you want to do. Uh, this does require a little bit of dexterity and probably experience of tying. So if you can tie roses, you can tie a dragon fruit. Right, so that's your first one in. You can now take this off, cut, and you can see the first bit's done. So that is the main lean tackled, so to speak. And then with this, again, you just work your way along, just uh, where you see the, the curves going. You can then do your tying. If you're thinking that's going to be, so do a little experiment, give it a light pull, is that going to be correct? Probably not, so in this instance, we want another one lower down. So you're again, just trying to pull the stem, so it's maintaining a fairly straight um, position to the cane. And if you can do, work so that you're, you've got the same groove running up the cane, because that will give it more support and it also be easy for you as well. So get that tied in. Then you'll need to turn it, like in this case, to then try and pull it back. At this point, you can now see that this top is on the wrong side. So you can either use your fingers or your bit of paper or whatever, just to ease it back to get you onto the right side. Like so, there we are. So you're now onto the right side and you can again go through, get your tie in. 
So with this uh, this Ute string, it's um is a pretty cheap string. So in all honesty, it doesn't matter if uh, if you have to waste the odd bit. So that section there really isn't going to pull in well enough. So what that will mean is that a reposition to go to the center here and by pulling into the center will allow me to then get it straight. So just, oh, momentary slip. So you can, uh, can carefully use your fingers. Um, again, if you need to use your fingers, if you just push into the internal bit there, that hasn't got any spikes to it. It's only on the corners. So you can use your fingers. Again, like I say, we're just using your same channel all the time. It means that it's quite easy, or it should be quite easy to get this done. Um, as they get bigger, definitely more difficult. <laughs> bigger danger element of getting the little spikes in, and they are very fine, small spikes. Uh, that trust me, they are very hard to get out your, your skin, out your fingers. Right, so let's show you that. So we've got up to here now, which just leaves this um, very top section where we've done the loose piece. That's just holding it lightly into position. So now comes where you want to tie that in. Once that's tied in, you can then cut that support off. Let me just re-angle this camera for you. Right, okay, so we're on to the final section. So again, just work out how you're gonna tie it, whether you need to go that way or whether it's easier to actually reposition the plant and pull it. So you wanna to go to the top, well, close to the top, but without being on that very tip. Again, use your finger if you need to, or piece of card. If you need to reposition the jute string, then do so. And on this top section, you want it so it's aiding support, but we've not tight tight because that top section will obviously continue to grow. Um, it will continue to grow upwards and also it will thicken up. So you need room for development. So once that's done, we can then cut off that original piece. And so now gives you scope to be able to look down the plant and see, is there anything that I can do to tidy it up a little bit more? Let me uh, just reposition it down. So this bit, I'd like to try and get that in tighter. And again, if just use your finger, see if that will squeeze in, which it will. Now, if it is very tight, or uh, when I say tight, if it's very difficult to move it in, then what you can do is you can wrap your string around twice and that will just give you that extra pull in but without putting too much force onto the actual plant that you end up damaging the, uh, the structure of the plant. So then you've got a double wrap in there, tie it exactly the same. And so these techniques are exactly the same for if you're trying to do roses or uh, blackberries, something like that. Just work your way around, see if there's any, again, anywhere else that could do with a, an extra little pull in. Um, and as I said at the beginning, I find it much easier to do this sort of thing without gloves, just because I've got much more dexterity. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that uh, you shouldn't wear gloves and you can do a very good job whilst wearing gloves. And it just means actually, if you wear your gloves, you could get it done um, and then come back and finesse it as, uh, as and when you need to. Right, okay. So there we are. That is the dragon fruit repotted and tied. And that looks so, so much better. Um, yeah, it will really make a big difference to the growth of the plant and uh, certainly how it looks. I mean, when you think that it was in that with little spindly 
split cane to how it looks now, just looks miles better. And uh, that's going to allow for uh, a proper development of that plant. So good job done. Now, do I feel brave enough to tackle the mother plant? So essentially all that's left to do, just give it a light water, uh, you know, very light. So you're literally just covering the surface and that will just allow it to settle in a little bit. Don't overwater because it will take quite a while for the roots to essentially venture out of that size root ball to go into the new one. So you want to just give it a light water, then let it dry, then give it another light water. Um, you know, so you're probably watering still once every um, three or four weeks at the moment. You know, we are only January. But um, yeah, that is job done. Well, that is it. That's um, the dragon fruit all potted. So uh, yeah, it didn't take too long, wasn't too difficult. Um, it is the same process for if you're gonna be planting up uh, your epiphyllums or any other sort of succulenty type cactus, for want of a better term. Uh, if you are going to be potting up normal cactus, so to speak, as in desert type cactus, then rather than using a multi-purpose, which may or may not contain peat, then use a cactus compost, which is a more loam-based product. Uh, I would still add some extra drainage to that because um, honestly, I believe that the manufacturers still don't put enough drainage uh, property into that and perlite um, certainly makes it a little bit lighter structure. So it's not quite so compressed. Um, but yeah, if, um, if you do have any questions at all on um, potting up your dragon fruit or epiphyllums, then please send them over to me. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, if you do like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on any future videos that I'm doing. And I always say it, but it is so important. Enjoy what you're doing, have fun, and um, well, just make the most of either being out there or being indoors and uh, getting creative or being, well, being at one with your plants. So till next time, mind there you go and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.